Hello, this is Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob, and today we'll continue our exploration of the brand new VMware vSphere version 7. In this case, we will be looking specifically at the vCenter 7, and we'll be installing vCenter Server 7 onto the infrastructure, uh, namely a, a, a Dell PowerEdge R640, which is running the ESXi 7 that we've installed on a previous video. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll notice is um, you'll want to go on to the ISO of the VMware VCSA, which is the acronym for it. And under VCSA UI installer, in this case, I picked the Win32 since I'm on a Windows 10 environment. And I'm going to go ahead and once you've launched this, you'll see you get install, upgrade, migrate, restore. We're going to go ahead and do an install. This is going to look very familiar if you've done previous versions such as 6.7, 6.5 and so forth. So let's go ahead and do next. I'm going to go ahead and accept the end user license agreement. It's going to ask for the fully qualified um, domain name in this case or the IP address. It's very important before you go down these steps that you have a functional DNS service. In our case what we have is we have a uh, sent OS version 8 running with bind 9 so that's been set up previously and uh, we didn't make a video of it since it's pretty straightforward if you understand Linux it's uh, pretty easy there's lots of videos out there as well if you've got Windows Server you can also uh, install as part of the features when you go into programs um, one of the features is a DNS service so you install that and then you get a DNS server so that just needs to be on so next step is we're going to go ahead and install. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to type in the IP address of our ISX host. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and type in 1.2.0. We're going to type in here our root password root user rather and the password I'm getting a certificate back I click on yes and now we want to name it something so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it VC SA and I'm going to go ahead and set a root password And this is where you get to pick the size of your virtual machine that it will create. Now, depending on what your environment looks like, if you've got, again, they, they basically tell you the deployment size here, if it's uh, tiny, small, medium, large, extra large. In our case, uh, it shows you uh, what kind of resources, or in all cases, it shows you what kind of resources uh, will be consumed by this virtual machine, basically the V Center. And the interesting parts are completely on the right here so if you want to have for example a total of 10 physical hosts then you can go with a tiny that will allow you up to a hundred vms so if you're going to be in a lab environment like we are this is it's perfect if you're going to deploy this on a larger scale uh usually i recommend going with small sort of as the the base uh which will allow you a hundred hosts and a thousand vms the, the larger machines now, as you know, you could buy things with, uh, you know, 40 cores and, and up. Uh, it, it becomes easy to create a lot of virtual machines, whether it's uh, virtual desktops, um, things like extra testing. You'll have VMs they're running for, um, you know, power management. You'll have, uh, if you've got a lot of uh, production machines and so forth, they may also require things for monitoring and so so the VMs can spread out and I see a lot of firms at first uh, tell me oh you know we'll never go past 20 we'll never go past 30 we'll never go past 40 and next thing you know they've got quite a few VMs running and the hosts just keep accumulating as well as time goes by so it's always good to uh, to pick something larger than what you think you'll need at the moment uh, of course you may not need to go into the extra larges uh, unless you've got quite an environment in which case you're probably very knowledgeable in the subject and you're probably uh, not one of my target audience but so we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick tiny for now and it's just a matter of, uh, of selecting it on top here so you see you can just select here so I'm going to click the tiny 
and it's going to say storage size. I could go and define this. I'm going to leave it to default and I'm going to go ahead and say next. And then it's going to ask me for the data store. As you may have seen on my previous video, I had created a couple of data stores. I was doing a lot of testing on NVMe uh, storage versus SSD storage versus mechanical drive storage. It's just an internal thing we were having, um, we'll say some fun, but we just wanted to explore the different speeds, the different IOPS we were getting, and the impact it had on things like Active Directory for Windows, on things like SQL. And in some cases, we had a database running with uh, terminal services, and we wanted to see what the impact was, different drive speeds with different memories, with different uh, CPUs and number of cores. So it's a perfect environment when you're in a lab to just go ahead and go wild and set it very small, set it very big, then you can really start telling what the impact is. From what you learn on that as well, uh, at the end you can go back into the production environment and scale things up and down and modify it accordingly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and pick our, um, we have a 1.9 or 2 terabyte uh, drive here so we're going to go ahead and just click next and this is where it gets a little interesting so now we've got to put the fully qualified uh, domain name um, we're going to go ahead and pick a static IP address and that's the network it's on that one's fine so we're going to go ahead and call it VCSA and then we're going to put dot and this has to match your DNS and the IP address we're going to give it in this case is have it written in front of me and the subnet mask. I don't know if it wants a slash 25 or 255.0. Oops. Let's just see if it accepts both. Uh, yes, so we could have uh, also, we could have done this or we could have just put 24. Apparently it accepts both. Uh, default gateway, in my case, is my router. Oops, an extra period. Uh, DNS servers, and this is where this is going to be very important. And there we go. Common ports, HTTP port 80, and just do next. So far, so good. If you've gotten an error message, like I said, the DNS is very important. If you don't have an entry for what we've just created, it will error out. Um, I've I don't remember, I don't think I've covered this in the video, but it's um, it's very common. And that's the reason. If there's no DNS, it can't find itself on the DNS server and it will just give you an error. And the error is not obvious. Um, I think the first time I encountered it, it was uh, much later on. It's, it's doing a whole bunch of stuff and then after 10, 15 minutes it comes back and just gives you an error. And uh, it's, if you're trying to... If you're in an environment where this is rush and you're just uh, you need it up and running because you have a very limited window in which to do updates and so forth, it can be stressful. In the lab environment, you do have the time to go back, open it up uh, a browser on the side, go do some research if you need to, or try different things. So there's really no stress in this case, which is why I enjoy doing these uh, with you guys. And um, so we're just waiting for the deployment. So at the end of the installation, this is uh, the message you get. By the way, if you're getting an error message at the end, uh, you, you I forgot to mention, but you make sure that your ISO file is local and not on a network drive, as you may get an error. Uh, I actually had, a, <laughs> had to take a second uh, take here because I ended up with a very strange error. And when I tried to uh, work my way through it, uh, it just got worse and worse and so I had to just scrap my uh, VCSA VM and just start again so I'm being very upfront with you and what I turned out to do differently than the first time is I simply launched my uh, mounted the, the ISO that I put locally first instead of being on our uh, network attached storage so uh, this time around the stage one completed there was no errors you then click on OK and then it's going to launch stage two so welcome to stage two stage two is the sso as is written here so a single sign on so we're going to go ahead and click on next and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to leave the time synchronization with the esxi server at this point generally if you've got a, an environment uh, that is production go ahead please and put the ntp here 
uh, and you can use there's services like uh, pool.org and so forth that you can use I would highly recommend that uh, in our case again it's a test environment this will be wiped and started again and again so it really doesn't matter uh, SSH um, access if you're going to be using high availability if you're going to be doing tests and so forth turn this on uh, be no just know that this is going to create a warning when you go into it so those that are uh, unaccustomed to this uh, might freak out to see warnings uh, once they get in but if they've got SSH turned on it is recommended to turn it off for security reasons of course, if you're using it for things like high availability, then you probably want it on. So in our case, we're going to turn it on and we're going to go ahead and click on next. Now, the single uh, sign on domain name, we can certainly put anything we want. In this case, it is a lab environment. So I'm going to go ahead and put vSphere.local as they have suggested. Again, it is just strictly a lab environment in this case. And I'm going to put in a password that I can remember. And be safe and keep changing them again in our case it's uh it's a brand new sso domain since there was none uh, we basically wiped out uh, all previous versions 6.7 and so forth so we have nothing else to work with so we're going straight for a brand new environment that is the simplest and cleanest way of doing this so do we want to join the customer experience improvement program we're going to say no in this case again it's not a production environment and so you get to see the summary and we've got our IP address that we had put in a previous stage uh, our DNS server which I highlighted how important that was and we're gonna go ahead and click on finish and it says you will be able to pause or stop the end okay you will not be able to pause and it's gonna go ahead and run through this and install all the services So this is completed. So as you can tell now, it's showing us how to reach the vCenter, basically by going to this URL, which is vcsa, that's what I called it, my domain and port 443, which is SSL. So let's go ahead and start that. Let me just uh, call it up here on browser and I'm going to there we go new advanced click on accept the risk and here we go so this is uh, my first look at the V Center version 7 so you're joining me for the ride so let's go ahead and click on the HTML5 client let's take a quick look at what it looks like and no surprise here so we're going to go ahead and go ahead and type it's here do you want to save it no so here we are inside the vcsa the v center and let's take a quick look around here obviously i have I've got to create a new data center, so I'm just going to leave it at data center for now. Click on here, and right now I have no host, so I'm going to go ahead and put in my host. So, of course, I've got my initial original host, which was set here, and it wants to have access to this, so let me just... Yes, and here we go. I don't want lockdown. Disabled. Add. Ready to complete. Here we go. So now I've got myself one one host in here, which is running a few things, and here's my VCSA see information on here 
So, maybe we can take a quick look around. Let's go back to monitor, perhaps. And go back to, let's see, our host. Let's see what kind of information we can take a look. There's no issues. We can see allocations. We can see our configurations. We can see our VMs. We can see our data stores. We can see a little warning here. Alright, there's not much happening on here, so. so there you have it. This is what uh, vCenter looks like. It's uh, very similar to uh, past vCenters. You can see uh, you know, overview and so forth. You can go to the configurations, go into the data stores, you can go into your uh, virtual machines. Uh, and your different hosts would appear here if you had a stack of them. And, you want it to go through them. Um, there's a menu here on top. Let's see if there's anything new in here. Um, very quickly looking at it, I'm not seeing a whole lot of, uh, of new features that are apparent. I guess we're gonna have to dig deeper and uh, play with it and see what else we can come up with. But in the meantime, now you know how to install vCenter. Thank you very much for watching. As always, you can visit us at www.ctobob.com. I have blogs there. I've got uh, some podcasts as well. And um, our main site, as you may have seen, is cobaltium.com, which is our consulting uh, business. Please, if you enjoyed this, make sure to put a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching.